A float with Henry Morgan. Although Jeffrey Hunter and Hero aboard the sloop overtake Henry Morgan and his fleet, Morgan refuses to see Jeffrey and has him put in irons. Not knowing the proximity of the Spanish fleet, Morgan and his ships, under cover of night, sail up the river and sack and loot the town of Santa Paula. With the lust for blood still upon them, Morgan calls for Hunter, intending to mete out to him suitable punishment. In vain, Jeffrey tries to tell him what happened on that fateful night when the Aztec necklet was taken, tries to make him believe that he's come to warn him of his danger. But Morgan, being successful, claims that there is no trap. Then Patchai bursts into the cabin for the news that the Spanish fleet is waiting for Morgan's ships at the mouth of the river. What did you see, Patchai? There's a fleet waiting at the mouth of the river, Captain. They have us bottled up. What's its strength? The men counted 12 first-class ships, Captain. The yacht number is, eh? We couldn't fight them. How could we maneuver into battle positions locked up here in the river? Seems that this time we've made a, we've been a little too smart. What talk is this? Not a Spaniard alive could out with Henry Morgan. Well, Hunter, perhaps there's just a little bit of truth in what you've been telling me. How else would a warning have been given to Spain? We can be sure of the fact that the fleet is not here by accident. I wanted so much to reach you in time and give you warning, Captain Morgan. If only I could have managed to make you listen to me last night before you went up the river. Do you think a dozen Spanish ships would have stopped me sacking Santa Paula? No, but you could have taken precautions. What are we to do, Captain Morgan? The men will be getting uneasy till they hear from you. The swine! Have they lost their nerve already? Can't we meet with a bit of opposition? Tell them that their skins will be safe. Go on, Patchai. Set about doing that. And leave this little problem for me to work out. Yes, Captain. So, Hunter... You claim that you've been the victim of a most unusual adverse circumstance. Until I returned and talked with Sir Thomas Mutford, I had no idea as to what happened on that night the necklace was taken. All I knew was that I had been taken by the authorities. I know now that my being taken was all planned by Dietz. That you would think I'd taken the necklace. And so the woman that we tried to find had a ship waiting off the coast, did she? Yes. And Dietz went with her, taking with him Kitty. I had promised that I'd rescue her. But I was struck down with fever. If it had not been for my friend Hero, I... I wouldn't be alive today. Because of what he did for me, Sir Thomas Mutford gave him his freedom. And you? What about your case? By a stroke of good fortune, Sir Thomas Mutford was able to prove that I was innocent of the crime for which I was sent to Jamaica. If you're lying to me, Hunter, remember that I can verify these facts as soon as I reach Port Royal. But because one part of your story has been proven, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt for the time being. Patchai! Come here! Yes, Captain. Have the irons taken off these two men? It seems that perhaps we've been unjust, too hasty in our accusations. You know, Hunter, I couldn't understand how it was that that Spanish woman and Kitty appeared to go off with you. At the time that Kitty disappeared... The Spanish woman didn't know that she, too, would have to vanish. It was supposed to appear that I had gone off with Kitty alone. Yes. Well, it's starting to make sense. I told you, Pat Shy, to have these irons taken off these men. Yes, Captain, but I... Will you do what I say? Yes, Captain. Then go and send a signal to the captains of the other ships. Tell them that to come aboard my ship at once. We must have a conference and combat the Spanish menace standing at the mouth of the river. You sent for me, Captain Morgan? Yes, I done. You're looking tired. Eh, who wouldn't be tired? I've packed more into my life tonight than many men do in their whole lives. Well, it's getting on towards dawn. We've not got much time and there's much to be done. Have you come to any conclusions as to what you're going to do about the Spanish menace? Yes, it's not a secret. I thought that you'd like to know. I would. The ships are sailing down the river now. 
You're going to try and fight your way out through the mouth of the river? No. The ships will be led by the Mary Lee. She will go on ahead. Already the ships are maneuvering into their lines. Yes. Then what? The Mary Lee will sail with every stitch of canvas spread. A course will be set and the wheel lashed. She'll be manned by a skeleton crew. But, but Captain, why, why no man at the wheel? Where that ship is going, no man would stay alive. I see. And what about the small crew aboard her? When everything is ready and the fuse is lit, they'll be away in a small boat. Fuse is lit? Yes. <laughs> I'm sending the Mary Lee on her last trip. She's going to sail right into the guns of the Spanish fleet. Aboard the Mary Lee, there is enough gunpowder to blow Havana sky high. It will be so timed that when she reaches the Spanish fleet, she'll blow. And then, Hunter, then we'll watch the Spaniards who can get away scurrying for their very lives. <laughs> Have you ever seen a fleet in confusion? No. Well, it's a sight worth seeing. But it must be done in the gray light of dawn, when the light is confusing. When the Mary Lee blows up, it will lift some of those Spanish ships out of the water. The others, it will set on fire. I don't think there'll be many in any fit state to give chase. And then in the confusion, we will slip away. There's nothing like a fire on a ship in the middle of a fleet to throw terror into a man's heart. I'll teach the Spanish dogs to try to trap Henry Morgan. Look there, Captain. The Mary Lee is drawing well away from us now, Captain. Aye, that she is, Hunter. She looks a picture in this gray dawn. I hate to see her going to a destruction, but I've no choice. When will the few men aboard her leave? Well, they have to judge the time the ship will take to reach the Spanish fleet and light the fuse accordingly, then get off. Look at those Spanish ships out there. They're drawn up in a semicircle, confidently thinking that they would last caught me. Won't they become suspicious? When they see that only one of your ships is going out to meet them? They will believe that I've sent one ship ahead as a decoy to engage them. And then while they're attacking her, I will slip away. That is what they will think. Now look there. Two of the Spanish ships are moving out of line. Those two Spanish ships are moving forward. They're going to engage the Mary Lee. But I say... Will they be able to intercept her before the Mary Lee reaches the main bulk of the fleet? No, that they won't. They'll be expecting the Mary Lee to turn to starboard. That is just what she would do if she was going to engage in battle. Her keeping straight on in full sail will confuse them. Here you are, Captain Morgan. I think you'd better take the glass. I think the few men are leaving the Mary Lee now by way of the stern. Yeah. Yes, Hunter. That is right. Yes, they're leaving the Mary Lee, all right. Well, that means that the fuse has been lit. Now, just you wait, Hunter, and you'll see a sight worth seeing in a few minutes. You're right about them thinking the Mary Lee would turn to starboard. See, the other two ships have altered their course again. Yes, I can see that. But the Mary Lee is beyond them. Uh, they haven't a hope of getting away. She must be almost within range of their guns now. No, not yet. It must be getting near the time for her to blow up. Look, you, Hunter. The other ships suspect that there's something wrong. See? Already they're turning in a line. But, Captain, they might be able to get a range of an explosion. Not they. Why, they've not enough canvas spread. Mary Lee is drawing up very close now. And there she goes. The sea's transformed into a ball of fire. The rigging of three of the ships is alight already. And two of the ships, the mast completely gone away. A fire will spread on those ships, and they're laden down with ammunition. A fire will spread to the whole fleet and destroy it. Look how the ones that are still able are trying to maneuver. Now is our chance, Hunter. While all that confusion reigns, 
We will slip out of the river and away. Well, Hunter, but for my small fleet, the sea is empty. Spanish ships that managed to get away after the explosion have lost us for good. I've just been thinking, Hunter. Thinking over a few things. You will find upon arrival in Port Royal, Captain Morgan, that everything I have told you is the truth. If what you say is true, then I have a job for you. What is it? Last night at Santa Paula, I had to use rather strong methods to make the mayor of the town divulge where his treasure was kept. Under heavy torture, he gave me much more information than I required. Willingly, most willingly. But he couldn't supply me with the details. And that is what I want you to do, Hunter. What could I do? I once heard you tell me, Hunter, that you were able to speak Spanish. The information that I require is to be found in Havana, in Cuba. I am wanting you, Hunter... They go there and get it for me, as my spy. If Jeffrey Hunter accepts this assignment to go to Havana, he will unknowingly be going to the place where Dolores and Diaz are. What chance would he have should they suspect that he is in their midst? Listen to the next exciting episode of Afloat with Henry Morgan. Mm-hmm.